بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن في ذلك العبارة إن في ذلك لعبرة لمن يخشى أأنتم أشد خلقا أم السماء بناها بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن في ذلك لعبرة لمن يخشى أأنتم أشد خلقا أم السماء بناها أأنتم أشد خلقا أم السماء بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن المتقين في جنات في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم 
القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحس والنجم والشجر يسجدان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصلي ربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر صدق الله العلي اللهم صل على محمد
وآل محمد صلوات جلي. I think it's um, I can say a dream come true working at a channel where I can serve the Ahlul Bayt um, every single day of my life. I work in Ahlul Bayt TV because it allows me as a person living in the West to dedicate my whole life uh, towards serving the Ahlul Bayt, to be a servant of Imam Mahdi, to be a servant of Fatima Zahra. I feel like this is a part of my duty to serve the Ahlul Bayt. I work for Ahlul Bayt TV because I believe in the message and the cause that's behind it. It allows me to fulfill my ambition as a, as a person grew up in the West to serve the Ahlul Bayt throughout my life. You realize that you're in a place where all the brothers and sisters um, are working to achieve the same thing and that is to serve the Ahlul Bayt in the best way they can. Ahlul Bayt TV is special to me because it utilizes the media platform to propagate the message of the Holy Household into every household. The non-Muslims have easy access to find out information about the Ahlul Bayt In the future, the first and foremost thing I would hope for for the channel is to hit the target of 3,000 partners. I would like to see Ahlul Bayt TV in the future to be a source of inspiration for every human that's on this planet. I would like to see Ahlul Bayt TV one day um, in, in our lifetime, inshallah, to be um, the, the voice for Imam Mehdi when he reappears, where he will be able to um, broadcast his messages live to the whole world, will be a channel whereby he can, inshallah, be able to come on and, and show the whole world what his message stands for. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise and blessings upon the Holy Household of Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi Brothers and sisters, respected elders, scholars, viewers watching from around the world, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahlul Bayt TV's third gala dinner from London. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. When we have an event like this, it is an event to show that we have succeeded to keep the message of the Ahlul Bayt السلام, alive. And our motto, which is the holy household in every household, is a dream come true for us. And Alhamdulillah, we have managed to keep this beam alive for three years. It is also an honor to have such a job where I am blessed to serve the Ahlul Bayt السلام, every single day of my life. And it is also a unique project because the community is also participating in this service to the Ahlul Bayt. I say this because it is you, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, that has kept this channel alive. It is the partners that have kept the channel of the Ahlul Bayt alive on our screens. Whether it's the partners in the hall today, or the partners at home, or all the viewers who have helped us keep this channel alive by donating one of donations throughout the year, whether it's throughout the Fatimiya campaign, or throughout the Ramadan 555 campaign, or throughout Muharram, the Labbaik, Ya Hussein. We are sadly running late, as usual, so no surprises. Uh, and that's not my fault, that is because you, um, you attended quite late. Um, but Alhamdulillah, the show will go on. Uh, it's a jam-packed show. Uh, I've got uh, speeches from scholars. Uh, a speech from our director. Uh, I've got an auction, the awards. Inshallah, you will be ready for a night to remember. Um, just on that note, I will now invite our first guest who has flown in for this event. He's, I think he flown in yesterday. He, came, he got to London yesterday, and I think he's leaving tomorrow, so he's here exclusively for this event, the world-renowned reciter, Nazar Al-Qatari. We welcome him with a loud salawat. Uh, 
أفلح من صلى على محمد وآل محمد Before I start, Mr. Ahmed Al Kazimi, who is sitting on table number eight, told me, if you know English, uh, at least say welcome to the people. I said, I need somebody to tell me welcome. And welcome to you to this event, uh, Mawlid. Sultan, Al Zaman, Al Imam, Al Rida, Alayhi Salam, Nasalullah Ta'ala, and Yar Zukana, Ziarata Hufid Dunya, Washafa Atahufil Akhira, Bifadli Salati, Ala Muhammad, Wa Ali Muhammad. Yal Muhibbala Bdehij Hail Wilad Wahai. والله وحي سلطان آل النبي للمات عدنا وحي وحي بالفرحة يزهي غدا كل بيت عامر وحي مسرور الشيعة علي بثامن وأشرف بشار مسرور الشيعة علي بثامن وأشرف بشار قلب الموالي انشرح بهاي الولادة وبشار وبشار جبريل من العرش على الخلق نادى وبشار وبشر يوم الرسل للأرض بارينا من وحاي صلوات أيها المرتضى يا علي الرضا أنت إمامي خير الأنامي أتمنى الجواب يكون بسيط عليكم وإن شاء الله تقدرون تساعدوني بالجواب يرزقكم الله زيارة الإمام الرضا في الدنيا وشفاعته في الآخرة أيها المرتضى يا علي الرضا أنت إمامي خير الأنام أيها المرتضى يا علي الرضا أيها المرتضى أنت إمامي خير الأنام أيها المرتضى يا علي الرضا أيها المرتضى يا علي الرضا أنت إمامي خير الأنام أيها المرتضى أيها يا الرضا أيها أنت إمامي خير الأنا بعد مرة أيها المرتضى يا علي الرضا أنت إمامي خير الأنام زاهرا لم تزل أنت شمس الأمل زاهرا لم تزل أنت شمس الأمل تهدي البرايا نحو السلام قد دعوت الورى نحو أم القرى قد دعوت الورى نحو أم القرى ونحن جئنا نحو المرام أيها المرتضى أيها ال... يا علي الرضا يا علي وين صوتك أيها ال... 
أنت إمامي خير ال... هلا هلا أنت إسلامنا أنت قرآننا أنت إسلامنا أنت قرآننا وأنت طه وأنت طه يا ابن الكرام يوم ميلادكم كل أعيادكم يوم ميلادكم كل أعيادكم بها ابتشرنا رغم اللئام أيها المرتضى يا علي أنت إمامي خير الأنا بعد مرة أيها المرتضى يا علي يا علي الرضا أنت إمامي هلا هلا فرحتي ها هي أحرف زاكية فرحتي ها هي أحرف زاكية يغنيك شعري عن ابتسامي عيدكم عيدنا فيه ترديدنا عيدكم عيدنا فيه ترديدنا بآي قدس تبدي غرامي أيها المرتضى يا علي وين صوتك أيها هلا هلا بالشباب أنت إما خير الأنام يا ابن خير الملا هاك عهد الولا يا ابن خير الملا هاك عهد الولا والعهد هذا سر التزامي أنت أنت الولي يا سمي العلي أنت أنت الولي يا سمي العلي أفديك عمري والخطب دامي أيها المرتضى أيها ال... يا علي وين وين صوتك أيها أنت إمامي اي هذه بيعتي ملؤها فرحتي هذه بيعتي ملؤها فرحتي من بحر حب بالشوق طامي هاك يا قائدي عهدي الابدي هاك يا قائدي عهدي الابدي للموت ابقى بك اعتصامي ايها المرتضى يا غريبا سكن أرض طوس وطن يا غريبا سكن أرض طوس وطن غرست غرسا للآن نامي أين من غربك أين من عذبك أين من غربك أين من عذبك زالوا جميعا وأنت سامي أيها المرتضى ما شاء الله بالشباب هلا هلا أنت إما اي انت انت الوفا شرعه المصطفى انت انت الوفا شرعه المصطفى وقيتها من تلك المرامي 
كم تمنيت لو زائرا آتي أو كم تمنيت لو زائرا آتي أو تسمع مني هذا كلامي أيها المرتضى أفلح من صلى على محمد وآل محمد نفسي بذكر اسم المرتضى طربت نفسي بذكر اسم المرتضى طربت وفي سفينة أهل البيت قد ركبت هويتي هويتي علوي النهج قد كتبت لا عذب الله أمي إنها شربت حب الوصي وغذتني باللبن رضعت من صدرها ردحا من الزمن رضعت من صدرها ردحا من الزمان حتى نما حب داح الباب في بدني لله من حرة طابت ومن لباني لله من حرة إذا أمهاتكم عايشين الله يحفظهم وإذا متوفين الله يرحمهم لله من حرة طابت ومن لبني وكان لي والد يهوى أبا حسن وكان لي والد يهوى أبا حسن فصرت من ذي وذا أهوى أبا حسني To liven up the atmosphere can we have another salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad As mentioned by the reciter Nazar al-Qatari Today is also the wiladat of Al-Imam Al-Sultan Al-Gharib Ali ibn Musa Al-Rada May Allah grant us his ziyarat and his shafa'at in the hereafter I now welcome His Eminence Sheikh Muhammad Al-Hilli We welcome him with a loud salawat أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله مالك الملك مجري الفلك مسخر الرياح فالق الإسباح ديان الدين رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وخاتم الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين البشير النذير والسراج المنير والطهر الطاهر والعلم الظاهر صاحب السكينة والمدفون في المدينة المنصور المؤيد والرسول المسدد سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم محمد (تصفيق) 
وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم Respected scholars, elders, brothers and sisters, viewers across the world Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alayka sayyidi wa mawlai Ya shams al-shumus wa ya anis al-nufus Ayyuhal madfoon fi ard tus al-sultan Aba al-hasan Ali ibn Musa al-rida Kun shafi'ana fi al-dunya والآخرة ورحمة الله وبركاته. Indeed, the auspicious occasion was remembered when the holy Imam marched towards a city of great importance, a city with many distinguished scholars. Over twenty thousand people had gathered. anticipating eagerly the grandson of Rasulullah to emerge. The city was Naishapur. And when the Imam emerged, they said to him, Ya ibn Rasulullah, enlighten our gathering with a statement. Give us something that shall be remembered and revered. Thereupon, The Holy Eighth Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Rida salamullahi alayh mentioned that I narrate to you from my father Musa ibn Ja'far, from his father Ja'far ibn Muhammad, from his father Muhammad ibn Ali, from his father Ali ibn al-Husayn, from his father al-Husayn ibn Ali, from his father Ali ibn Abi Talib from Rasulullah from the Archangel Jibra'il from the Almighty Jalla wa Ala Kalimatu la ilaha illa Allahu hisni faman dakhala hisni amina min adhabi that the word la ilaha illa Allah is my fortress whomsoever enters it shall be saved from my chastisement. Thereupon, the congregation was indeed ecstatic with joy and happiness. They have heard the golden narration from the grandson of Rasulullah, yet they had not heard the full narration. Imam السلام, then emerged and said to them, بِشَرْطِهَا وَشُرُوطِهَا وَأَنَا مِنْ شُرُوطِهَا It, it comes with its terms and conditions and I am one of the conditions. In other words, the statement of the Holy Eighth Imam served to establish and demonstrate the importance of the concept of wilaya. This belief that is indeed held strongly within the school of the Ahl al-Bayt and the followers of the progeny of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because the narration says, Buni al-Islamu ala khams, that Islam, the religion, has been established upon five principles, prayers, fasting, zakat, and hajj. as well as wilaya, yet the sixth imam and many other narrations state that ma du'ya li shay'in mithla ma du'ya lil wilaya. That when it comes to wilaya, it occupies a prominent position. And the imam alayhi salam wanted to establish this in the minds and in the hearts of people for generations. When it came to this principle of establishing the following of the representatives of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we find that the Imam alayhi salam is one who disseminated the knowledge and the nur of Ali Muhammad. And indeed his biography is established upon this important accomplishment. And that's why he was known as Ali Ali Muhammad, the one who had the opportunity to propagate the message and the beautiful teachings of the religion of Islam 
as presented by the glorious infallible progeny of the Holy Prophet. And hence you find the narration that states that he informs a companion by the name of Hamdan ibn Sulaiman. He says to him, Ya Hamdan, ahyu amrana. Rahimallahu man ahya amrana. Many of us have heard this narration from the sixth Imam. Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Ridha also affirms it, yet adds an important element to it that today we wish to revive. This person, Hamdan, says to him, Ya ibn Rasulullah, how do we revive your affairs? How do we accomplish what you have set out for us? Imam salam says, تَتَعَلَّمُونَ عُلُومَنَا ثُمَّ تُعَلِّمُونَهَا النَّاسِ you first and foremost educate yourself with our knowledge. Thereafter you teach it to the people. And this is where the promise of Imam al-Ridha comes in as we celebrate his auspicious birth. He thereafter says, فَإِنَّ النَّاسَ لَوْ عَلِمُوا مَحَاسِنَ كَلَامِنَا لَتَّبَعُونَا if people were to know about our beautiful speech and our teachings, they would automatically follow us. This is the promise of Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Ridha. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. And this is where the establishment in today's world, in the world where Islam is under the microscope, in a world where an individual has the audacity to come forward and produce a cheap, low-value film, dishonoring, disrespecting, and insulting the greatest human being in the history of mankind. He had this audacity and this world that would indeed spread this within a few days, sometimes within hours. This media revolution, how does it fit with the message of the Imam to disseminate the knowledge of Ali Muhammad to people and to introduce them to the religion of Islam as taught by the representatives of Allah and Hujadullah fil Ard. How does this fit? It comes through the media. It comes through a way of communication by which people are able to understand and the message is delivered in its pristine, profound manner. And this is where a channel like Ahl al Bay TV fits into the statement made by Imam al Ridha alayhi salam, whereupon it spreads the teachings of the Ahl al-Bayt, whereupon it creates that atmosphere in each and every home that people are able to watch it, whereby the knowledge of Ali Muhammad spreads and is able to inspire many. You only need to speak to those individuals. And once I had the honor, when I was presenting a show in Ahl al-Bayt TV, I received a call from China. I had never spoken to anyone from China before. It was a unique experience. He called and said that I am an individual who amongst the community watches this channel all across. I said to him, are you in Beijing? He said, no, I'm in a village far, far away from Beijing. He mentioned the name. Naturally, I couldn't remember it. Yet, what it, the message that was sent is that across the world today, this is where the challenge and the responsibility lies. Where people are questioning the religion of Islam, where people are pondering and reflecting upon the Holy Prophet, where people are also being presented with misconceptions and ideas about the madhab of Ahl al-Bayt that needs to be refuted and needs to be corrected. A brother who is a revert, and you will hear, inshallah, tonight the inspirational stories of those individuals who found the light of the Ahl al Bayt through lectures, through discussions, through seminars, through listening to the stories of others through this medium. Today, such a medium stands to support the oppressed around the world. People in Bahrain, people in Saudi Arabia, people in Pakistan, people in Indonesia, people in Malaysia, in every corner of the world where the followers of Ali Muhammad are being.
persecuted and are being oppressed. I leave you with one thought. Today the challenge is great, but the opportunity is even greater. The generation that is growing in the West has many questions. Today the media and especially channels like the Ahl al-Bayt TV are able to be at the forefront of this media revolution to ensure that our children the future generations are brought up with the correct teachings and are able to stand, to honor, to defend, and to give everything they can to, the, to protect the sanctity and the dignity of the religion of Islam and personalities like the Holy Prophet and the Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as -salam. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us all to achieve this important goal and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the tawfiq to rise to the responsibility in order for us to be of those who follow the command of the eighth imam in spreading the message of Ali Muhammad and allowing the nur that Allah promised should, mess, should spread in every corner spread indeed We thank Sheikh Muhammad Al Hilli for that insightful lecture. I've been told that if I smile, you'll smile back at me. I'll look at this side because the faces that I see, they're, they're scaring me, I think. Or is it, maybe I'm scaring you, so you're scaring me. So I'm going to start smiling. You can start smiling back at me. Okay. Uh, now we have our director's speech. He's an inspiration to us all at the channel. And that is because. Even though he's the director, he does the most hours at work. Even though he's the director, you see him doing jobs that maybe a normal director at a TV channel shouldn't be doing. And personally, not just because he's my friend, but sometimes when I'm down, I look up to Haji Amir Taqi, and he is my inspiration to, con to continue serving the message of the Ahl al-Bayt. I welcome him with a loud salawat. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد Respected scholars, brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته On behalf of the Ahl al-Bayt family I would like to thank you for coming to this prestigious event our third annual gala dinner this event represents a milestone in Ahl al-Bayt TV in its history, in its achievement, in its success. When I, when I was growing up as a young person, um, I didn't want to give a cliche speech, so I wanted to give something different. When I was growing up in, um, as a young person in the Middle East, um, I was surrounded by my family who were preoccupied with the massacre of, of our family by Saddam Hussein. I grew up in a time when my parents, my father, my mother were concerned about you know, how many, f how many family members have we lost? How many sisters and brothers have we lost? How many uncles and aunties have we lost? It was a time of emotion, it was a time of atrocities and loss. And as I came to the UK in the, in the early 90s, I, c I couldn't reconcile the, the, the immoral society that was here. The society that was driven by sexual greed, it was driven by uh, capitalism. And I was, I was confused, I, I didn't know what to do, I don't know how to survive in this country. So time, time passed and I went to university and I ended up being bashed by people from different sects and for, for just purely praying in, in, the, in my daily prayers, for purely having a simple understanding. And all these factors made me understand and made me aware. I said, what am I really doing here? What, what's really happening? Um, why are all these things happening to me? And what am I going to do about it? And I was, you know, I, something profound happened to me when I was young. I took a group of people to Saudi Arabia and this group of people were circumambulating the Kaaba, and suddenly, um, out of nowhere, one of the Mutawwa arrested one of us and took us off to the, um, in the police station. And as you know, we were assaulted. 
we are physically assaulted. And all these things happened to me as a young person growing up in the West, um, being under the oppression of Saddam Hussein, suddenly coming to the United Kingdom, not understanding the society, then suddenly being kind of intimidated just for the fact that I can believe in some things as simple as as Ashad Na'iyah when Allah. And that, that all culminated into the fact when I, when I was, just three years ago when I was with Sayyid Mahdi al-Mudarasi, and we sat down and said, let's launch this channel. What really hit home to me was that the fact that when I was growing up, we never had a chance to air our views. As a person, when I lost three aunties and three uncles, as young, you know, when you, I, everyone would appreciate that if you would lose members of your family, it would affect you daily. It would, it would, it would kind of ruin your, it would ruin your, your structure. And so I thought to myself, how come, you know, as a person growing up, why can't I speak out? How come no one could, how come no one could hear me? Why was I ostracized from this world? And I said to myself, this channel gives me this opportunity. This channel gives me this chance to speak up. This channel tells me if you're, if you're facing oppression, be it in Iraq, Saudi, Pakistan, any other country in the world, there's a voice for the voiceless. When you, your own religion's under, under, under scrutiny and you have no one to help you. I was, I was in university at times and I had no one to ask. People would question me with things that I don't know what to do. Yes, the mosques are providing a service, but where do I go? And this channel really, this achievement that's happening now is that it's answering all these questions for me. Alhamdulillah, in the last three years, and, and I know I'm running out of time, I should have had this presentation before Salah, but unfortunately, uh, things had to be moved. But brothers, I wanted to say just a couple of words and I close. Um, you've been an outstanding community for us because without you, Ahl Bay TV wouldn't be here. You're a community that not only allowed us to start this channel, but a community that's ensured that this channel continues for the last three years. And believe me, after spending over three million pounds, people say, where did you get this money from? I said, I don't know. Honestly, every single day, we pull out our bank statements about 50, 60 pages full of donations of 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds. It's all these small donations that are accumulating for us to be able to sustain this channel. So I say thank you very much. And please, please, this event here is really not for auctions or to raise money. This event here is to say thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your efforts. And let's ensure that every person, wherever he may be, in any country, has a voice either to protect his religion, to protect his right, to protect his freedom. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're here to um, witness Sister Laura, um, inshallah, becoming a, declaring her shahada and becoming a Shia Muslim. Uh, as Shia Islam is based on the love for Ahlul Bayt, one uh, scholar once told me that the love for Ahlul Bayt is only given to a selected few. So those who receive it, they should appreciate it and be thankful. So inshallah what we're going to do is we're going to recite the, the Shahada in Arabic and then she'll recite after me and I'll explain to her in English. Ashadu. Ashadu. Anna. Anna. La ilaha. La ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Amira. Amira. Al Mu'minin. Al Mu'minin. Al Mu'minin. Al Mu'minin. Wa Imam. Wa Imam. Al Muttakin. Al Muttakin. Aliyan. Aliyan. Waliyullah. Waliyullah. Well, listen, I've got to thank you guys because if it wasn't for that TV, if I didn't, that shoot day when I lost the dub when I was, you know, too much. And I'm looking at the window to contemplate suicide. I said, listen, I had enough of this. This is too much and I can't understand what's going on. Where do I go from here? 48, no education, boom, boom. And I just, somebody, I just sit on the chair. I'd like a robot and I just grabbed the thing and went through the TV and then I just stopped there, this one. And, I, and the TV had been on 24 hours since Tuesday. It came off today. The, the big thing we do out of me in Islam is that I feel very complete. Mm. I, th I find a lot of answers. Um, and, you know, the power of the, of, of the Quran, you know, I found that, you know, it was speaking to me. Sure. It was live and it was very, very real. 
coming to Islam and discovering how Islam treats a woman really empowers you and, and gives you so much of freedom and it encourages you to do the best that you can in every way but at the same time protects you and it doesn't pressure you. <laughs> I found out that Shia Islam for me was the right choice. It seemed logical, it seemed correct, and it seemed like the what real Islam is. It is an honor for me to welcome Sister Laura on the stage. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Thank you for that kind introduction. It is an honor for me to be here today to tell you a little bit about why I am here today and how Al Bayt TV has played such a major role in my journey. I was born into a Christian family in the northeast of Scotland. It was during my teenage years that I felt that my morals and my general outlook in life made me feel different to the majority of my peers. It was those, it was my Muslim friends who I felt most in tune with. I've been interested in learning about different religions and faith from a young age. However, it wasn't until I started university that I really felt like something was missing in my life. I was curious about my own beliefs, so I started searching for religious guidance. It was then that I began to research Islam. I reached a stage in my life where I felt overwhelmed with certain negative aspects of society. And it was in that day that I turned on the TV and I was bombarded with yet more of the same. And I was exhausted with it. <laughs> so I decided I, I, wanted to, I wanted to watch something with meaning that was meaningful. So I turned to the religious channels and I was flicking through some programs and I came across a, ch a channel with a panel of ladies in hijab and they were speaking in English about um, family issues and it's something that I could understand. Before I knew it, I was engrossed with what they were talking about and um, uh, before I knew it, I'd watched the next program and the next program after that. And then the next day, I wanted to come home and watch more Alabate TV instead of what normal things are on the TV. I guess you've all guessed the channel name. Of course, it's Alabate TV, Sky Channel 842. The channel brought to life what I've been researching and it gave me a greater knowledge and understanding of Islam. Nothing I have found compares to the benefits that al TV has brought me. It's in English, and um, if it's not in English, it at least has subtitles, which means that I can follow it and understand it. There's also a wide variety of different shows, which reaches out to both Muslims and non-Muslims. For example, my mom, um, she watches the channel and she's told me that not only has she learned about Islam, but it's also helped her understand my reborn faith. 
There's even things like the news banner across the bottom of the screen, which highlight events around the world that otherwise I would be unaware of, because some of the things are not even broadcasted on BBC News or Sky News. Um, I've got to make a special mention to the show Reborn. It's got a special place in my heart because I believe that without it, perhaps I would not have had the confidence to approach the Shia community this summer. It's by watching al TV with an open mind that I've realized that a lot of media misrepresent the truth of Islam. For example, there is a misconception that women under Islam are suppressed. Watch al TV, you will see that that is quite the opposite. It's not the case. Um, the women on al TV are inspirational to me. They're educated and they're free. They have freedom of speech and they talk from anything about family issues to the latest technologies and recipes. And inshallah, I have picked up a few culinary skills myself, cooking tips. <laughs> Um, before, I did respect hijab. I've always respected hijab. However, um, I, mi I didn't have the complete understanding. Um, but it was through watching is, um, discussions on the channel and such like that I actually found the truth is that hijab is in fact a liberation. I had the privilege um, this summer to work um, and see all the hard work that goes on behind the scenes and, and it's through the hard work of the team that has made Alobate TV the success that it is today. Thank you Alobate TV for welcoming me into your family with open arms. You have shown me the right path. And I want to take this opportunity to thank, with my sincere gratitude, to all of the viewers and the supporters of the Alobate TV. With, it's through your support and commitment that I am here today. Thank you. I think I can speak on behalf of the staff at least to say just as Sister Laura mentioned that the presenters of the women's show are an inspiration to her. She is an inspiration to myself and the staff at Ahl Bay TV. And alhamdulillah I was present on the day that she took her shahada. And I am blessed to be able to serve the Ahl al-Bayt in any way I can. And I think if I ask for one thing from Allah is for him to accept my deeds in the service of the Ahl al-Bayt because all my other deeds I'm not sure are accepted but at least inshallah the service of the Ahl al-Bayt my deeds are accepted. I now welcome Ali Radha Ja'far with a loud salawat. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Firstly, thank you very much indeed, everyone, for attending this evening. Thank you to all of our guests that have traveled from afar to be with us this evening. Many of you should, inshallah, now be convinced as to the important work that Ahlul Bayt TV does in spreading the message of the Holy Household to every household. One of the key achievements that we were able to, to do is to stream the activities in Muharram. The first 10 days of Muharram are very important for us all and many individuals felt very hurt by the fact that they were unable to go to Karbala and to the Ziyarat of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And we sat down and decided that one of the things that we would do is bring the shrine of Imam Hussain alayhi salam to every household that we broadcast to. So we arranged a stream, a live stream 
from Karbala to the homes of many. And many individuals emailed us saying, you know, you, you enabled us to do this yara from London. However, my dear brothers and sisters, that is something which we want to replicate each and every year. But that is one of the most expensive features of what we actually do. The cost of bringing those live streams is £10,000 just for those 10 days of Muharram. However, the benefit you heard, Laura, it really changes individuals' lives. It en enables them to engage with Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam and indeed those martyrs of Karbala. So I'm going to begin, before we get to the auction items, to encourage each and every one of you to be part of this, part of this endeavor of bringing the message of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam to hundreds and thousands of homes across the globe. From London to Lagos, there are individuals that are benefiting from the message of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. One of our core key components of the calls that we receive are from Nigeria. There are individuals, a huge Shia community in Nigeria that have benefited from Ahlul Bayt TV and that is because of your assistance, the partners, the donors, everyone in this room that is here today supporting Ahlul Bayt TV in this very important endeavor. There are 400 people in this hall. We need to begin by raising 10,000 pounds. So the simplest way to do this, of course, and mashallah, I, um, it's always good when you're in my position to try and see who is driving which car. And I, I was, you know, when I, when I watched people drive in, because people were honing at me, thinking that I know where the car park is, and it, we all had a very efficient system, so you all found the parking very easily, alhamdulillah. So individuals were honing at me, and I, and I saw, um, you know, pr provided they're not all on higher purchase, Achieving that ten thousand pounds should not be very difficult. So, is there any one? Let's start, let's make it very simple. There, there may be one individual here who can just solve this, resolve this situation, and pledge ten thousand pounds. Otherwise, we'll have to expand um, our horizons a little bit. So, any one individual. I don't want to start naming cars, of course, but I did see the drivers, who who is willing to contribute ten thousand pounds to enable us to bring the message of Imam Hussain al -Islam during the first ten hours of Muharram across the globe. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. All right, evidently not. So we'll have to make it a little bit, right. we'll have to make it a little bit easier. So we're gonna break it down now. We're gonna break it down to two individuals at 5,000 pounds each. Now those cars were worth more than 10,000 pounds and certainly a lot more than 5,000 pounds. So we're gonna make it easier. Two individuals at 5,000 pounds each. I'm, I'm glad we're really getting on well here. For someone like me, this is the most awkward moment. Ah, mashallah, so brother Azam, one individual at 5,000 pounds. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So we have a donor, but do you, you want to say a few words for us? Brother Ali, Al you didn't exactly introduce me, did you? I didn't, I didn't no. introduce you, I didn't introduce you, sorry. Please, please after you. Said Ali, 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 introduce who, sorry? Yeah, introduce me. Introduce you? Yes, please. Right, Ali Fadl, can we, can we just give him a bit of attention, please? Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Uh, can the camera please make sure you focus on Ali Fadl? Yes, okay. This is Ali Fadl. Thank you very much. Is that okay? Much. No, no, that's Excellent. fine. That's perfect. Thank right. you. Well, good. Right. Um, so I don't know what I'm doing here. Just to let you guys know. Before we start on the interviews, uh, this is totally off the hook. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. But apparently I'm supposed to go to each person who's donated or pledged um, some sort of money towards the channel and interview them. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi uh, My name is Azam Jafri. We are a family from Doncaster. Uh, where we are actually the only Shia family and that has been the case for over 40 years. Uh, so for us, uh, not having the facilities, the community, the centers on our doorstep, the channel has had a profound impact and it is, this is something key for us all to remember really because we don't you know, often realize that there are people scattered around the world in pockets around the world and uh, Brother Ali Rida has actually sent me emails for people, from people that are all over and that's their only contact with the Atul Bait. So, I think it's very important for us to remember that and that's, that's a key thing that the channel is doing, that it's, 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 a, it's a platform for people that have no opportunity or no, no access to any type of facilities. There's another key thing that I did want to say to people in particular who are considering donating to the channel, is that often we have reservations when we think about donating to channels or, or organizations and we're, we're often concerned about who may be involved. And um, you know, even I had 
sort of similar reservations, but I've been fortunate enough since, uh, alhamdulillah, to meet with several members of the Ahlul Bayt team. And uh, these are some of the most humble, hardworking, trustworthy, honest, dedicated people that you know, I've ever met. So I encourage everybody you know, to, to get behind the channel because the best of people are working behind this channel. Uh, and you know, it is an is a extremely good cause and you have the best of people working to make uh, full use of any money or anything that you contribute. Alhamdulillah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Thank you very much, Brother Azam, for starting, uh, starting us off on a wonderful, wonderful note. Now, we've got that first £5,000. By the way, we've got about 30-odd auction items, so let's just get this over and done with as quick as we possibly can. Um, another individual who can donate uh, £5,000 to this very important court. Bear in mind that this will bring the streaming, what is happening in Karbala, to viewers across the globe. It will come on all of your screens as well, but also thousands more on this the first 10 nights or the first 10 days of Muharram. So anyone else, one person to inshallah contribute 10,000 pounds. So looking on the ladies section as well. Anyone on the ladies section? Come on sisters. Come on sisters, yeah. We're not getting very far here. Right, let, let's break it down. Evidently, let, let, you know what? I, I'm starting to think these cars may have been purchased on, on higher purchase. So let, let me relate. Let me, let me break it down to something you guys may be used to. Is five individuals at 1,000 pounds each. Before you, before you go on to the donation, just a couple of words of poetry to get us a bit of a reminder of what Karbala is. Karbala Karbala I long for There's nothing I want more in you I am so sure and to you I tell I am missing your scent wishing to you I went forgot you I haven't and I never will I live my days longing to visit your Hussein I live my days longing to visit your Hussein Karbala and I will never forget this name Salawat so we need, Ali thank you very much. So we need five individuals each to contribute a thousand pounds each, or ten individuals to contribute five hundred pounds each. So do, can we get ten individuals at five hundred pounds each? Do I see ten individuals at five hundred pounds each? Anyone in the ladies? Five people at a thousand pounds each, I think. Five people at a thousand pounds each, or ten individuals Sisters, at five hundred pounds each. Twenty to fifty. We've got someone. We have someone. Thank you very much, sister. A few words, please. Okay, we have a thousand pounds here from a Salah Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Oh. Can we have four more people joining our sister over here? So we now need four, four more individuals to contribute a thousand pounds each, and then we'll move on to the Thank auction. I, love that. I think everyone's looking at me very nervously. Everyone's looking at me very oh, nervously. Sisters. Yes. Me. Well, it's, it's, uh, dinner will evidently be delayed. <laughs> um, so four individuals at a thousand pounds each is what can we I, need. Can I close my eyes and just sort of point at someone? And Did I see a raised hand? Ah, do we I see a raised hand? By the way, this is always a, in these situations, it's very, um, very awkward. Don't sort of scratch your face or anything because it's live TV and there's no going back. No one's going back. So we, uh, have, we have two donations. Salla ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala. So we now only need two individuals to contribute a thousand pounds each, or four individuals to contribute five hundred pounds each. So there we are. Let's try and achieve that, inshallah. Two individuals at a thousand pounds each. I, I know the people in this room very well. I just don't want to name anyone. Do we have two from the ladies? But it may, it, may, um, it may get to that. Well, why are we waiting for that? Because we're not, we're not, hopefully we'll achieve that by the we've end of the evening. We've got a sister. I we've got a sister. I recognize the face from last year. So. <laughs> I don't know that we have 500 pounds here. Uh, a regular donor. Let's start, start with the sisters first. So okay. uh, what's the pledge for the sisters? Can we have a few words, please? We have 500 pounds from sister. Assalamu alaikum. 
Uh, yeah, 500 pounds, and I believe my husband sitting there will also donate 500 pounds. Ah, sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So, so we need another two, is that right? We now need, yeah, we now need another two individuals at 500 pounds each. Uh, let, let's just um, make sure that everyone knows who your husband is. He's over there, by the way. So, la salawat for him. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. The mic, I don't know, I don't know which one's the husband. <laughs> <laughs> I have to apologize. You're the brother, he's the husband. Okay. A couple of words. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I think uh, Ahlul Bayt TV uh, was long overdue. Inshallah, may Allah uh, give them strength to go on and do the work that many of our peers started many many years ago in this country and alhamdulillah the youth especially are now taking this forward and i think one of the things which has attracted me to ahl bayt tv is that uh, we have a lot of youth fresh blood uh, involved on the running of it and also in all of the programs and uh, i think uh, we should try to replicate this in every organization that we have in the UK. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So all we need now before we move on to the auction items is two individuals at 500 pounds each. Two individuals at 500 pounds each. Do we, have, do we have that pledge before we very quickly move on or before we come back to this item? Two individuals at 500 pounds each. We have one. Have we, have we got that? In the ladies' side, so in the gents' side. Right, we're going to very quickly now move on um, to the auction. We have Sister, Raz Sister Radhiya from Dubai who has just pledged 500 pounds. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And of course a reminder to our international audience, uh, all those individuals in Dar es Salaam where we visited of course in Canada, please do uh, also call in and make your pledges. So one more person, who will be the final individual to seal this night, the night of Ashura, the 10th night, inshallah, which will enable Ahlul Bayt TV. We have Abdul one more 500 pounds. We have, we have, Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Did we have another pledge? We had another pledge as well? Ah, Haji Abdul Rauf, mashallah. So we now got 11 nights, do we? Were you putting your hand up? Allah salawat for Haji Abdul Rauf. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And now that we've got 11, we should really finish on 12 for obvious reasons. So uh, one more person, inshallah, so we can round this up, 12 nights, to assist us. So all we need is, is, is and I won't go up to 14 or anything like that, so we will end at 12, but let, let's try and add on, uh, and on an even number. One more individual at 500 pounds to seal this in the back over there. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Thank you very much, brother. That made my life a lot easier. We can now move on to the auction. Inshallah, have dinner on time. Um, <clears throat> I, I was thinking it's always nice to start an auction with a joke. So yeah, I'm going to share one with you now. I always put myself on the spot in these situations because if no one laughs, it's on live TV. And that generally means that, uh, well, obviously, I have a reputation to keep and all the rest of it. But nonetheless, here, here we go. Um, there, there was a chap who was actually in, in, you know, attending an auction, and he was auctioning um, for a parrot. So everyone was um, placing bids um, for this particular parrot, but he really wanted it, so he kept bidding. And the bid went higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And eventually, alhamdulillah, he actually achieved the bid. He, he, he won and he took the parrot. So he goes up to the auctioneer and he says, well, look, I, I've made a fundamental error here because I'm not sure if the parrot can actually speak. And he says, well, of course he can speak. Who do you think has been bidding against you all this time? <laughs> Thank you very much. That worked very well indeed. Inshallah, we are coming to our last two segments. Just before the awards, inshallah, we will liven up the hall a bit. And inshallah, I will call again to the stage. And he, just uh, this poem that he's about to read, it's sort of a reply to the film that was made against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Al Hajj Nazar Al Qatari has prepared this poem, and inshallah we welcome him again with a loud salawat.
And if possible, this time, let's try and join in. So inshallah, he feels more welcome. So when he leaves London, he doesn't tell, go home and say, you know, the London crowd was quite boring. So inshallah, a louder salawat. For the love of Bibi Fatima, it's Zahra alayha salam, a third and louder salawat. أفلح من صلى على محمد وآل محمد من زغور سن عرفتها وصاحبتني وصاحبتها من زغور سني تحبني ومن زغر سن عشقتها وياها شفت الخير كله والسعد لما شفتها ما أظن يوم اللي ستني ما أظن يوم اللي ستني ولا أظن يوم العفتها عاشت بقلبي حبيبة بكل نفاذة وكل مصيبة ولازمتني من الطفولة ولازمتها بأكلي وبشربي ومنامي بأكلي وبشربي ومنامي حاضرة وما فارقتها هي كمت المبعبارة هي كمت المبعبارة من أبوي وأمي أنا تعلمتها الطيب لساني وتعطرة لو قلتها وانطقتها أرد سئلك يا الموالي من هايل وصفتها ما أظنك عنها غافل ما أظنك عنها غافل اليوم كم مرة لقلتها الصلاة على النبي وآله الصلاة على النبي وآله وآلة وآلة أحلى كلمة تعرفتها هذا جوابك بس هذا أفلح من صلى على محمد وآل محمد يا 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 محمد أعلى من هذا يا محمد يا محمد يا محمد أنت ذكر في صلاة العشق يتلى أنت شهد سيدي بل أنت أحلى أن تذكر في صلاة العشق يتلى أنت شهد سيدي بل أنت أحلى نور دربي يا محا نور دربي 
إيهاك قلبي بعد هاك قلبي صوت رداد ربي يشهد حب أوحاد يا محمد يا محمد ها ها يا محمد يا محمد يا محمد يا محمد ويا ايدي ها يا محمد يا بس 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 صفق بس صفق نعم بعد عشت عمري تائها بين المعاني لم أجد إلا ذهولا في لساني عشت عمري تائها بين المعاني لم أجد إلا ذهولا في لساني همت شوقا يا محا ذبت عشقا يا محا همت شوقا يا محا وين صوتك وين صوتك ذبت عشقا إيه حار الفكر تاه الشعر في كسر يا محمد حار الفكر تاه الشعر في كسر يا محمد يا محمد يا محمد يا محمد كل مدح فيك يا طه قليل حار حتى في مديح جبرائيل كل مدح فيك يا طه قليل حار حتى في مديح جبرائيل صاح فخرا يا مح لحت بدرا يا مح صاح فخرا يا مح لحت بدرا يا إيه نور قد لاح يحيي الأفراح ورد فواح يا محمد نور قد لاح يحيي الأرواح ورد فواح يا محمد يا محمد يا محمد ما شاء الله بالشباب الخير بفضل من حبكم وصلي أتحب الأبوذيات الخير بفضل من حبكم وصلي وصومان بهدايتكم ها وصلي الخير بفضل من حبكم وصلي وصومان بهدايتكم وصلي وصلي يا رب اقبل مساعينا وصلي وصلي على الهادي وعترته بهاي المسيه
انا باكر ان شاء الله ساعة عشرة مسافر لا تخلوني اطلع وانا للحين ما رويت قلبي الله يخليكم يا اي نفرح ان شاء الله كلكم السنة القادمة اكو احتفال بعد لو لا السنة القادمة سواء تكونون اهني او تكونون تحت قبة الامام الرضا انت تختار مولد امام الرضا او اي مولد ان شاء الله تكون ساعدني بالجواب بالدماء نفتدي الرسول جوابك كلش سهل ترى بس اريدك تجاوبني صلوا على محمد وعلى محمد بالدماء نفتدي الرسول بالدماء نفتدي الرسول بالدماء نفتدي الرسول بالدماء نفتدي ما تفتدي رسول الله حتى بصوتك حتى بصوتك تبخل تبخل على رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله بالدماء نفتدي الرسول بالدماء بالدماء بعد 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 بالدماء نفتدي كلنا نفتدي بدمنا للنبي رسول الله بدنيا واخرة بدربة لوذ نحتم بظلة واليسيء لنقلة الله نزه ورسله يا خليقه يا واحد قل لي خلقه يوصل له ولمن يمسه نقول بالدماء نفتدي بعد بعد بالدماء ايه قالك ترى فقرتوك قدم برها ايقا قالك ترى فقرتوك قدم برها ايقا دس قدم زمان ايسي خدكو اقبا ايقا دس قدم زمان ايسي خدكو اقبا ايقا خدكو اقبا ايقا خدكو اقبا ايقا كيو كيين هيركت كسيكا أدار بالدماء نفتدي الرسول بالدماء وين صوتك بالدماء صلوا على محمد وآل محمد When I was reciting in Arabic, this guy who knows Arabic didn't tell me repeat. When I recited in Urdu, this guy who doesn't know Urdu told me repeat. <laughs> okay, I have, okay. I'm very happy, I'm very happy. Inshallah, you will, will be happy as well. Look, the jawab of the qasida, it was in Arabic, okay? And uh, what I heard, actually, it was not that big jawab. I have Urdu jawab. Dam bidam Ali Ali Pukar. Dam bidam Ali Ali Pukar. هر قدم علي علي بكار هر قدم علي علي بالدماء نفتدي الرسول بالدماء نفتدي وين صوتك وين صوتك بعد اعلى من هذا بالدماء بالدماء قل لمن يعاديه كف قبل أن نثأر قل لمن يعاديه كف قبل أن نثأر خاتم الرسالات هو خطنا الأحمر نحن شيعة الهادي نحن شيعة الهادي وإمامنا حيدر إن نسيت من نحن يا لعين سل خيبر إن نسيت من نحن يا لعين سل خيبر باليهود سيفنا يصول 
بالدماء نفتدي الرسول بالدماء وين جوابك وين جوابك بالدماء بعد بعد بالدماء بالدماء تجك فاتمة زهرة كدوايم الجاية تجك فاتمة زهرة كدوايم الجاية خد تري زيارتك أنبياء شلياية خد تري زيارتك أنبياء شلياية أنبياء شلياية أنبياء شلياية كربلا بهج جاية تجو اكبار دم بدم علي علي ها بالدماء بالدماء نفتدي الرسول بالدماء بعد مرة بعد مرة على راسي بالدماء نار يا هدري نار يا دم بدم علي علي بكاء هر قدم علي علي بكاء دم بدم علي علي بكاء هر قدم علي علي بكاء دم بدم علي دم بدم دم بدم علي هر قدم علي علي هر قدم تري سويا جني مكلي جي بهار تري سوني جني مكلي جي بهار دم بدم علي علي دم بدم علي أكتت أكتت عالك ترف قرتوك قدم برهايقا عالك ترف قرتوك قدم برهايقا دس قدم زمانيس خدكو آق بايقا خدكو آق بايقا خدكو آق بايقا كيو كي ينهيرك تكسيكا أدار دم بدم هر قدم هر قدم I'm leaving خلاص أفلح من صلى على محمد وآل محمد No, 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 no There is one guy there telling me finish No, no, come here, come here, come here ذكر علي عبادة قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ذكر علي عبادة لازم نذكر أمير المؤمنين علي عليه السلام في مجالسنا تقبل لو ما تقبل نخيتك يا علي وعيني ترابك ترابك أنا ما أنخطر لغيرك نخيتك يا علي وعيني والله ترابك أنا ما أنخطر لغيرك ترابك ترابك ريحة مسك والعنبر ترابك بترابك أندفين وأنت تشي يا صلوات مجنون تدروني 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 بالساكن عيوني يا عيوني يا عيوني مجنون تدروني 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 بالساكن عيوني يا عيوني يا عيوني 
مولاي حيدار علي مولاي مولاي حيدار علي مولاي حيدار مجنون تدروني 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 بالساكن عيوني عيوني اي مجنون تدروني 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 بالساكن عيوني 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 مولاي حيدار مولاي حيدار مولاي حيدار لا يا حيدار حب حيدر سيطر بالنص روحي وتأمر صار الملك بيا مالك لي احساسي وتاجع تل براسي لو مرني طارية يشغل احاسيسي وعاش بكواليسي باحلام وردية احلام محلاها وبيها انا تباها من تظهر علي عشتانا اتحلم 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 بمحبوبي اتكلم اتكلم اي عشت انا اتحلم 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 بمحبوبي اتكلم 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 مولاي حدا مولاي حدا مولاي حدا مولاي حدا علي علي مولا علي علي مولا علي علي مولا علي ما شاء الله بالشباب علي علي مولا علي علي مولا سمعني سمعني علي علي مولا علي علي مولا ها ما شاء الله بالشباب علي علي حب علي الفوز الشيعي غدا يا فامدد لي في يوم حسابي يدا إن صلاتي ثم صيامي إذا لم يشفع لي حيدر ضاعت سدا يشهد ربي أن بروحي له حبا دوما قلبي فيه شدا صهر الهادي أنت مرادي علي صهر الهادي أنت مرادي علي 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 مولا علي علي مولا قالوا الرابع قلنا الأول قالوا الرابع قلنا الأول نص عنه في القرآن نزل تمت فيه النعمة من ربنا والدين بفضل الكرار اكتمل فاسأل عنه الليل وسوح الوغى أفهل كان مثل علي بطل والقيادي عند الجهاد علي والقيادي عند الجهاد علي 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 مولا علي علي مولا ما شاء الله بالشباب علي علي مولا علي 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 مولا علي بعد بعد علي 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 سألوا قلبي أي نزيل به 
عليه قال حبيب لا يشبهه أحد حفرت في الشريان حروف اسمه فهو قريب مهما عن ابتعد عين لام ياء ملأت دمي علي علي عين لام ياء ملأت دمي ليوزعها في أنحاء الجسد فإذا ما أعدائي جرحت يدي فإذا ما أعدائي جرحت يدي سال ولائي فوق دمائي مدد هو ينجيني يوم الدين عليه هو ينجيني يوم الدين علي 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 مولا علي 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 مولا علي مولا علي علي مولا علي علي مولا علي علي مولا علي اسرع اسرع علي علي مولا علي علي مولا بارك الله بكم بارك الله بكم نسال الله تعالى ان يتقبل منا هذا القليل Can I ask uh, Sister Rebecca Masterton and Hajj Abdul Rauf to join me on the stage to give out the awards? And inshallah, we welcome them with a loud salawat. <laughs> One of the sole objectives of Ahlul Bayt TV has been to give a platform to existing organizations and people to make their voice heard. And on this note, Ahlul Bayt TV last year launched the Ahlul Bayt Awards for Excellence. This initiative was designed to celebrate the outstanding contribution made by individuals in our community. And Alhamdulillah, today we have chosen eight remarkable people who have done so much without recognition and appreciation. The first award for his outstanding services to the community in public recitation of supplications. I started reciting while I was very young at the age of 13 in Zanzibar. My late father was instrumental because he himself was a Qari. And this is how I proceeded. There was a special kind of uh, passion in me. I recite the Holy Quran and I used, we used to recite uh, something called Barzanji, very well known in East Africa, in Zanzibar during the wilad, the birth of our Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Munajat of Imam Ali السلام, which he recited in Masjid Kufa, which has Mawlai, Mawlai, uh, I st we started reciting it very early in the morning, especially in the month of Ramadan. I said to myself, why not? reciting it during the uh, Laylatul Qadr, Layali al Qadr, on 19th or 21st, 23rd. So I suggested if we could recite it on 21st night and uh, Alhamdulillah the community took it very well and said, okay, we will start reciting. This is go goes back about 60 years ago. When I moved to Dar es Salaam for 10 years from 1967 to 77, Every year, continuously on the 21st night of the month of Ramadan, I used to recite this munajat. And Alhamdulillah, today, throughout the world, this munajat is being recited. Uh, Muhammad Siddiq al Munshawi or Muhammad Khalil al Husri, Abu Al Anin Shaisha, these were also the ones who were, who were inspiration to me. So, apart from my late father, and Alhamdulillah, all the teachers. Our, our uh, community teachers in Zanzibar, it, were, it was these reciters from, from Egypt. They were also quite uh, an inspiration to me. It's a pleasure for me and for anyone for that matter to serve the community. And uh, I enjoy serving the community, whatever I can in my humblest way. 
I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the if in a little way I've done anything to serve the community, I'm thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think we should, all of us together, continue to serve the community for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين الله مسلم أما بعد respected scholars my elders brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I feel deeply honored to have been nominated as one of the recipients of Ahlul Bayt TV Award. I should admit though that I was a little bit stunned when I learned about this nomination. Anyway, I will not do justice if I did not mention that the credit really goes to all those teachers and the guides who helped me, who trained me, and uh, who helped me in, any, in all ways, whenever I needed them, I thank them. And above all, my late father, who himself was a teacher and a qari. Once again, Jazakallah. He was really an inspiration to me. Jazakallah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The second award for her outstanding services in education to the community. My name is Alia Azam. I work in Al Sadiq and Al Zara schools. I'm a science teacher and I also um, conduct lots of interfaith work. I trained at the Institute of Education as a science teacher. My first job was this school, which was the first uh, Shia Muslim school in the whole of Europe. The school has been running since 1991. The ethos is manifested through interaction with the pupils. We try and uh, alter the curriculum to try and make it um, Islamic in certain aspects. We, we actually made um, a DVD called The Spirit of Unity which looks at the similarities and differences between Sunnis and Shias. We have actually sent this to um, a company which um, is one of the biggest websites for teachers. Um, we've also made, um, with the help of Dr. Chris Hewer, other resources. We've made The Spirit of Hijab which we have launched in St. Ethelberger's Church last year. Our school, um, a Jewish school and a Catholic school have been selected to work together at the Learning Zone in Wembley Stadium where children of other faiths mix together and learn from each other. Alhamdulillah, we, you know, we're very happy and um, you know, very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for um, you know, giving them the tawfiq to achieve success. Um, and uh, we're very proud of them, we're very proud of the students. Being part of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, looking at the, the lives and how, you know, the human beings develop and become young adults, um, it, it's very rewarding. It's something that I would encourage because I, you know, I have seen the fruits of working in a faith school. But the future of religious education is about all our futures. We must not succumb to the dichotomy of us and them. We must transcend our differences, not deny our differences, but affirm our common humanity to show that we are independent, co-independent and interrelated to one another. Alia Azim. Uh, 
uh, in the name of Allah, the lovingly compassionate, the lovingly merciful. Um, I'd like to first convey my thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me this opportunity. Um, I'd like to convey my thanks to Ayatollah Sayyid Fadil Milani, who has been a pillar of support and a beacon of light for me, and the alims who are involved in the spirit of unity. We have Sheikh Ayyub and Sheikh Muhammad Hilli present here today. Um, thank you very much indeed for your help, and um, my thanks to all the children of Al Saadi Canal Zaira School. And we look forward to seeing many more Muslim schools who will be uh, a standard of excellence, not just for academic education, but moral excellence. Thank you. Our third award for his outstanding services to Ahlul Bayt TV. My involvement with Ahlul Bayt TV, it wasn't like handing a CV and then coming a certain day for interview and I start working. One day, Brother Amir phoned me saying, uh, said Mehdi Mudaris is here, is here in London and they want to talk to you. And the idea was to expand the basic production uh, unit to a bigger channel like Alabet TV. And uh, we said Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and we started. I said, okay, is the best time we can serve Ahlul Bayt alayhum It was my first time going back to Iraq after nearly 33 or 34 years. And uh, when we got there, it was uh, four of us, myself, Sister Rebecca, Brother Arif and Mullah Ali Fadil. First day, not working, no, go to Imam Ali Salam. Because it was beginning of Muharram, so it was quiet. You could just go there to the Haram, touch the Dharih, and ask Imam just to, to help us really. For the second trip, we had an experience of the first trip, and but we had a bigger team. Alhamdulillah managed to get permission, which was, was really exclusive and a special permission for the team, Ahlul Bayt team, to stand by the Qatlagah. Uh, we call it in Arabic, Shabbak al Madbah. One of the officials said, Haji, I don't know what you have done. But this is, I've been working here for many, many years, but I have not seen a lady, especially talking in foreign language, to stand by the Qatlaga, the window of Qatlaga, and then present program. It was amazing. It was really amazing. From a personal view, a channel has strengthened my belief to Ahlul Bayt Salam. When you see such a these, um, what we call it in Arabic, Mukashafa or Baraka or blessings, you know what you're doing is the right thing you're doing. When it comes to medical condition, when you receive that help in whatever condition you have, and in a moment of you are either 99% going to be paralyzed after the operation, well, I say, okay, thank you very much, but I think it's the other way, because we've got Ahlul Bayt If it wasn't for that barakah and the moment of that turba, that khak, which what I saw, Doctor said, this is impossible. When you see all these, you have been given, okay? Would you say, I don't care about the channel? The more you know Ahlul Bayt Ali Salam, the more you, you would love to be at their service. Welcome the father figure of Ahlul Bayt TV, Ahmed Al Kadhimi. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh um, I don't know what introdu introduction uh, Brother Mas'ud said but uh, let me thank all the Ahlul Bayt TV team. Okay, the Ahlul Bayt TV starts with T. But if it wasn't for the hard work of the whole team around here, Sister Rebecca and everybody, we all wouldn't have been here. And uh, many thanks to you all. It's really a great honor to come here and to receive this award. And I would like to present this award to 
the hard-working Ahlul Bayt TV team, especially people who are working behind the cameras in production, in engineering. If it wasn't for their hard work, this channel wouldn't be on air. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you very much all. Our fourth award for her outstanding contribution towards ladies' public speaking. My name is Zakira Shiroz Jaffer Dalla, and uh, I'm an Islamic lecturer. You know, I never went on this path with a, with a plan. I started probably about eight years ago, really finding that I had so much to share. Recently, we had the Ashura Assembly in uh, Leicester uh, last year, and uh, I was the only female speaker at that assembly. And I found that I had inspired a man who was a non-Muslim, and what attracted him to, the, to our religion was that our women uh, have a voice and that we encourage each other to speak out in public. So one of the ways that I really reach out to people is through my Facebook. SubhanAllah, I'm able to do a lot of writing through Facebook and do a lot of preaching that way. As a reciter, I'll tell you, I'm the one who stands to be inspired the most by what I do. Because the best way you can learn something is to teach it. Some of the difficulties also is just being a mother and having children that need you. But I'm so lucky to have a, a supportive family that has uh, taken care of the kids for me and just said, go forward and don't think about anything. We're, we're managing things over here. My role model really has been my mother. For whatever I've learned about Islam now, I realize she's already taught it to me through her actions. And I fought with her about the things that she was doing. And she would say, no, this is the right thing to do. And now I realize truly it was the right thing to do because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has preached it. it. Brings us back to having uh, female speakers because when you have women in the community who are good role models, then it's our children who stand to benefit. This is the Insight magazine of the World Federation. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, this is me in Leicester, this is me in Karachi, and uh, mashallah, the students of Al Murtaza school. The, uh, there were 1,700 students in the audience. One of the things that I've increasingly become known for is my puppet shows. And uh, this was not something I planned, it's just that I found that there were a lot of little, little kids in the audience who needed also to get a message. And so I developed these puppet shows. I would say also that uh, having a, ch a channel like Ahlul Bayt TV uh, channel has also uh, done a lot for me, I must say, because when I was interviewed by Sister Zahra Al Alawi uh, about my experiences, a lot of people learned about me all over the world and that's when I realized how far-reaching the, uh, the influence of this channel is. Every corner of the world is having the Ahlul Bayt salam, in their household. Shairuz Jafar. Eight years ago, Something happened to me that made my mediocre, meaningless life just rock and shake from its very foundation. Some people may say that it's a dream that I had, but I know that it was as real and more real than I've experienced anything in my life. And I want to tell you this today because this is a very special day for me. And I haven't shared the story with too many people, but after today, <laughs> I think the world will know. But eight years ago, I saw in, my, in the darkness of my room the shape and the silhouette. And it was a king. And I can tell you the gold edgings of his robe, the amama, everything, I can describe it to you. And the way he carried himself, I knew without a doubt that this was the eighth imam, Imam Ali Radha alayhi salam. And he said to me, tell them about us in good times and in difficult times. And the road and the path he took me on is, has been beyond my wildest imagination. And it is no coincidence that it is on his birthday that the most precious thing in my life 
has come to me. This gift is not from a TV station, it's from Ahlul Bayt. And this is what I have lived for and what I want to die for. I've talked about a great man who has led me on this path. I also want to mention two other great men in my life. One, my marhum father, who as a father of four daughters, taught us to have courage and confidence. And the second is my husband, Dr. Mohsin Dala, table 15, where are you? Who has helped me live that courage. And, alhamdulillah, babysat the kids and cooked while I'm gone. <laughs> Jazakallah to both of them. And thank you to all of you for this. There is no word to describe what this is to me. This is going to be the most precious thing. I treasure it. And I ask you to pray that I can be deserving of this for me. That's all you can do for me. Thank you so much. for his outstanding services to the community in social affairs. My job from the establishment of Islamic Center in England uh, was uh, to take care of the family and social affairs and also other important part that I play at the center is talking to people who want to embrace Islam. 30 years now, I mean, since uh, 1980s, since 1980 when I arrived uh, in UK first, I used to get the most difficult and hard cases. I mean, there were cases that were hanging around for almost 20 years and nobody had been able to solve it. So I made an effort and uh, took the responsibility of the case and then wrote uh, letters to the Maraja Taqlid in Qom and Najaf and they gave me the authority to deal with such cases. When I uh, was uh, studying in Qom, uh, I had a very general idea that I want to become a scholar like my father and uh, serve the community. Majority of the scholars at that time in the 80s. They were busy either uh, giving lectures and speeches and uh, they were not really involved in addressing these issues. I felt it was an obligation and responsibility to, do, to deal with it. Around 30,000 cases I have dealt with. I would say that the case that uh, made me or sort of uh, pushed me into this direction was one of the uh, oldest cases in London. Uh, and this lady had been to many scholars, many ulama, and none of them had solved her problem. And then she went to Sunni scholars and they divorced her. And then uh, when I arrived uh, around that time in the 80s, she was told that she had committed uh, sin. So she came and cried uh, in front of me that, look, I don't want to commit sin, but the scholars have not dealt with my case and made me to do this. And I want this problem to be sorted out once and, uh, and for all. So she came to me and I, that inspired me to write the letter. Maybe uh, that was the uh, case that uh, pushed me into this sector of society. Sayyid Muhammad Rizvi. Assalamu uh, alaikum. I was told that uh, food is ready and uh, I had prepared an hour's speech. <laughs> so I have to reduce it to 30 seconds now. So uh, thank you for the reward, uh, for the award. Uh, I pray, uh, I pay thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving tawfiq and blessing to me to serve the community and to my parents and especially my 
family members who go through a lot because of the job, the type of job I do. Uh, usually, I, I was not expecting the award because I know that 50% of people who come to me are not happy with me. <laughs> because you can't please all. Especially in divorce cases, you can never please two parties. So one of them definitely goes against you. And bro Brother Sheikh Ayub was telling me that you need bodyguards. And, uh, and uh, I, I had been strangled by some of my clients as well sometimes. So it's a difficult job. Anyway, uh, and my family suffer a lot and I pray thanks to them as well for uh, allowing me to do what I do. Uh, without their help and support, I would not have achieved this. Thank you very much. for his outstanding services in public affairs for the community. Well, my name is Yusuf al -Khoui. I'm the Public Affairs Director of al -Khoui Foundation. And we are involved in many facets of life in the UK for the Muslim community. We are involved in community cohesion, we're involved in education, we're involved in the national curriculum, we're involved in um, the prisons. We are also involved with empowering women and having programs of sports programs and others for them. What has inspired me is really how uh, lovely my community and the Muslim community is, but how badly understood we are, how our rights are not given, and this is what prompted me to try to bridge the gap between our needs and uh, our power. We have a very dedicated staff at the foundation. We have a lot of volunteers who volunteer to do the work. A great number of lawyers, doctors, who come and say we believe in this work and we want to be part of it. A big part of our work is interfaith work and we try to uh, explain and understand and work together with other faiths to raise standards of our places of worship, uh, to find uh, the structures to deal with issues like uh, public health, issues like the environment. We have managed to get uh, Muslim Imams recognized in the prison service. When in the 1990s, when we started this work, there was not a single full-time Muslim Imam. Uh, we also managed to be on the board of uh, um, uh, organizations which deals with Islamophobia, which deals with anti-racism, which deals with uh, uh, any public facet. Uh, we hold uh, celebrations for Eid in Parliament. We have a very active youth club. We have a very active number of youths who come, want to know, want to learn. These are real achievements which one can only get through working hard and working on the street, working with the youth. I am very much motivated and encouraged by the need to serve our faith, our Holy Prophet, his disciples, our living Imam, to serve him in the best possible way so that they are proud of us as their disciples. Sayyid Yusuf Al Khoui, who couldn't be here today, but collecting the award, his son Ali Al Khoui and his daughter Fatima Al Khoui. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I'd like to thank Ahlul Bayt TV today on behalf of my father, who really appreciates this award and who inspires me every day because he never stops working for the community. Alhamdulillah, and I hope that one day I can follow in his footsteps and so can many other people as well to serve the community. And my father asked me to send his salams to everyone and thanks and his apologies that he couldn't be here today as uh, he was abroad. Um, but I, I just also want to say I'm so proud of my father and thank you to Ahlul Bayt TV. Uh, you're doing a great job. I know most of you very humble, humble people doing a great job serving the community. Uh, so thank you very much. Hope you enjoy your dinner.
for his contribution towards interfaith and education. My name is Dr. Chris Hewer, and I work in the field of educating ordinary adult people to understand about Islam and to work more closely in Christian-Muslim relations. The first reason that I'm engaged in this work is that I am a believer, and on the Day of Judgment, I will have to give an account to God for the way in which I have spent my life. So when God says to me, I sent amongst you in Britain another faithful community. What made you so arrogant as a Christian that you thought that I couldn't speak to you through them? My journey into this field began, as many things do for people of faith, with an accident as it appeared. In the early 80s, I was assigned in the city of Birmingham to a secondary school to be a specialist teacher of religious education. It didn't take me long to realize that I knew nothing about Islam. And so I went away to study part-time while still being a full-time teacher and did a master's degree in Islamic studies. And that was how I begin in 1986. People have a profound misunderstanding about the person of the prophet. As we see, there are quite often scurrilous attacks upon the person of the prophet through various forms of media. People therefore need to understand the role that Muhammad plays, not just in the life of Islam and in the history of the world, but in the faith and spiritual development of every individual Muslim. But Islam is about a, a way of life, a faith commitment in response to God. Therefore, one has to come to know and to love that which one studies. I want to seek in Islam the voice of God speaking to humanity, and that includes me. So the Quran is guidance for me, the Prophet is, is example for me. The life of Muslims should be a lived witness of that guidance for me. And I need to expose other people to that if I am to be an authentic teacher about Islam. Dr. Chris Ewer. It's your food that's going cold. <laughs> Friends, thank you very much for uh, honoring me this evening. It is, of course, an honor for me to celebrate three years of Atal Bait TV. And it's also a pleasure, therefore, to know that I'm only three years old. <laughs> because I think that I have been around uh, on the channel since the first year. I just want to say one word to you which has not been sufficiently underlined this evening, and that is the way in which Atal Bait TV and other things in which we're involved has a hugely important role to play in taking the message and understanding of Islam to non-Muslim people. It is not just that you are talking within the community, but we have a huge responsibility to help people to understand what Islam is about in wider society. And so I thank you very much for honoring me and I dedicate it in that purpose to help people to understand better about Islam. Thank you.
our final award for this evening for his outstanding services to the Muslim community. Munasker, affectionately known as Mullah to everybody in the community and outside the community, was a man who was dedicated in the service of not only the community but the entire humanity. He worked long hours and spent sleepless nights to make sure that he did his best the, for the propagation of the Muslim of Ahl al-Bayt. Mullah started his life as a volunteer worker in Mombasa, Kenya. He went on to continue to be self-taught, teaching and learning Arabic, Persian. He was fluent in six languages. When he moved into the United Kingdom in 1972, he thought that there was a need now to form a worldwide platform so that the work done all over the world by the Khoja Shia community could be integrated, could be monitored, and we could be done at much better levels. It is extremely difficult to find such a personality because this was a man who was unique. He would be comfortable in a gathering when he was sitting with elderly people, when he's sitting with youths, or even when he's sitting with children. He was so dedicated to his work that once he was convinced of a certain cause, of a certain project, he went all out to ensure that that project resulted into completion. I remember his words at one time when we were struggling in Uganda to repossess our religious centers in that country. And he told me, Asghar, remember, once you start the work of the Imam, rest assured that help will come from hidden quarters and hidden sources, and this work will always be accomplished. Mullah passed away in the year 2000, but the community misses him. Others still today miss him. Mullah has left behind a legacy and we as custodians of the work that he started, we continue to strive on the same path and we exist to serve, we continue to serve in all fields of economics, of religion, of social needs of this community and others. The famous uh, statement which Mullah made was, I do not pray to Allah for the acceptance of my small deeds. But I pray to Allah to give me an opportunity to serve. And whenever he got another next opportunity to serve, he in his mind was convinced that Allah has accepted his previous work. And that's why he was given this opportunity now to embark on another project. And he said, when I meet my Lord, I will tell my Lord, thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord, for giving me life. The late Marhoum Mullah Azhar and collecting the award on his behalf is Sean Abbas, Secretary General of the World Federation. Can I just have your attention for a few moments, just a few moments for the speech and also if we can recite a Surah Al-Fatiha for the Marhoum Mullah Azhar. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم It is a deep privilege for us at the World Federation to collect this award on behalf of a truly inspirational, iconic leader Marhum Mullah Azgarli M.M. Jaffa Not only did Marhum Sahib serve with simplicity and integrity he maintained honesty and tenacity throughout marhum mullah azgar showed unrivaled levels of commitment and unrelenting dedication above all marhum mullah sahib was a visionary and i remember as a 10 year old child in birmingham 
listening in a meeting of the World Federation. And at that time, 17 years ago, Marhum Mullah Sahib talked about having TV channels that show the madhab of the Shia faith. At that time, we had five channels, BBC One, Two, Three, and Channel Four and Channel Five. But now look at us, we are showing that reality coming true. And look at Ahlul Bayt TV and the wonderful work they're doing. I want to leave you with this quotation that you may have heard before, but which always leaves me, which always leaves me feeling enthused to do community work because we have so many community workers in the room. Marhum Mullah Sahib said, I don't pray for his acceptance of my amal as much as I pray for the opportunity to serve. And the day he grants me a new opportunity to serve, I believe and I will believe the previous ones have been accepted. And I hope till my last breath the opportunities are there. And when the Almighty Allah calls me back, I will be able to tell my Lord, thank you for giving me life. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you so much once again for this award. And I humbly accept it on behalf of Marhum Mullah Sahib. And I'm sure once again we can recite Surah Fatiha for him. Another person that we would like to remember, but not in an award, but just on the stage here, is someone that the Ahl Bayt team, and I think there was only three or four of them at the time, went to a few days before the channel was supposed to launch in Manchester. This person, by the name of Abu Zahra Abud, passed away this year. This person, when the brothers went to him, including I think Sayyid Mahdi, and asked him that we need to start the channel next week. The first question this person said was, how much do you need? They said 80,000. And from my understanding, he told them, go home and inshallah the money will be in your bank accounts tomorrow. This person has always been a support for us every time we're in need of funds then he has always been someone to give a hand to us and he has been a person where he prefers his name not to be mentioned where he was doing this work for the Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam without telling others that he was doing this but this year he passed away his son is with us today at the gala dinner but if we can recite a surat al-fatiha for his soul And now, I finished, seriously. Sajjad, this is it. You can eat. Finished. You can all eat. You're eating anyway. Probably doesn't make a difference. <laughs> I will leave you with this short video. I would like to thank Sister Rebecca Masterton and Hajj Abdul Rauf, the Ahl Bayt TV presenters. I think they need a round of applause. Inshallah, next year I get an award. Whoever's in charge, make sure I get an award. I will leave you with this short promo video that we made, The Voice of the Oppressed. And inshallah, you will keep us in your du'as. Ya Rabb al Hussein, bihaq al Hussein, ishfi sadr al Hussein, bidhahur al Hujja.
special show this evening dedicated to the current turmoil in Pakistan, where we find in several areas that the Shias, uh, Shia Muslims are being attacked, killed, Shias are being ethnically cleansed. Uh, we have been for the last few days covering the most recent developments um, in, in Bahrain. On Sunday night, uh, when uh, a prayer service was being held, uh, by the time, by around 8.30 o'clock when the ceremony had, uh, when, when the occasion and the budget was concluded, um, uh, two mortal cocktails, these homemade firebombs, were thrown at the front entrance of the uh, foundation. So what we need to do is get united, number one, and number two, pass on the message. And the very important thing that uh, did what happened in Gilgit, Baltistan, the worst thing that happened, that the media was blacked out. And what you are doing, highlighting the same thing. As Brother Masood said, that uh, our uh, channels of the ARY, Geo, and our Pakistani channels, other channels, no news at all. No news at all. Today we're discussing a tragic and horrifying event which took place in the Belgian capital of Brussels last night. Uh, now, there are still early details that are emerging from Belgium so far, but what we do know is that last night a Shia mosque in the region of Anderlecht was attacked by a single man who was sought to burn down the mosque and he poured flammable material uh, through the mosque and, and he set it on fire. Oh, oh, oh. 